Hello everybody. This is a first video on a series of videos about Python programming for engineers. My name is Mark Bucker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. In this video we will learn some basics about the IPython notebook. We, learn first, we take our first steps in Python programming and we will learn how to make a graph. We will make use of the Canopy Express software to run Python. Canopy Express is free software that can be downloaded from nthought.com. Once you start Canopy Express, you will see this window. And to open up a new notebook, we click on Editor. And this window pops up and then under File, in the File menu at the top, we click New, IPython Notebook and the new notebook opens up in this upper right hand corner. We don't really need the other two sub windows, so let's close the file browser and let's co close the Python prompt. And we are only left with the IPython notebook. The IPython notebook, what you see here, is called a code cell, this gray area. And in the code cell, you can type Python code. For example, we can type two plus three and then we can hit shift enter and it will execute that code cell shift enter and it will return the value five of course in python we want to store our values in variables so we can say a is equal to two and b is equal to three and then say a is equal to <coughs> a plus b and that should give us if we hit shift enter should give us five of course, it might be nicer if we store a plus b in a variable named c. We can edit the code that we just entered, and we go back up with our cursor, and we type c equals in front of a plus b. <coughs> we run it again. Hey, and now Python, I Python notebook doesn't return anything. Why not? Well, there isn't anything to return to the screen because a plus b is stored in a variable c. So to see what the value of C is, we type print C. We hit again shift enter, and you see, ah, C is indeed five. If you want to make the print statement look slightly nicer, we can type print C equals between quotes, which makes it a string, so it will <coughs> print that string to the screen, then a comma, and then the variable C, which will print the value of the variable C to the screen, and we get c is equal to 5. You may have noticed that before these code cells, there is something that says in and then between square brackets a number. That's the number of the code cell. And every time you run the code cell, the number increases by 1. So the number is also the order in which code cells were executed. They don't have to be in the order they are on the screen. So we can re-execute this top cell. It still gives us 5, but now it has Number six, it's the sixth code cell we have run. Next, we're going to calculate a parabola and try to make a graph of it. Let's calculate the parabola y is equal to x minus 1 times x plus 1. We hit shift enter. Oh, we get an error message. It says name error, name x is not defined. That's correct. We never gave it a value of x. So let's go back to the code cell and add that. Let's calculate y at the value x equals 0. And then maybe we want to add print y so we can see what y is. We hit enter and we get y is equal to minus 1. And that seems to be correct. Now we want to calculate this parabola and make a graph of it. For that, we have to calculate y at the number of x points. And for that, there is a very nice function called linspace. Linspace <coughs> calculates the number of x values between a starting and an ending value. We type here linspace. We open the parentheses. And we wait just a second. And then Python comes up with help on this linspace function. It tells us we have to give it a starting value, a stop value. And then it will calculate by default 50 points from start to stop. This nice little help we get here, we can also expand. There is here a plus sign. If we click on the plus, 
we can scroll through all the help there is on this lint space function if you want to get rid of this lint space help you click on the x it's gone or if you start typing here it also disappears by itself let's see that if you open up the parenthesis again if you now start typing here it will disappear let's say we want to create 10 x values from minus 2 to plus 2 starting value is minus 2 see the help box disappeared to plus 2 and we do 10 values um, then you will see with this one y statement it will calculate that parabola at all those x values so we, if we hit, hit here shift enter we will see indeed 10 values of y once we have these 10 values of y we can also make a graph of it for a graph <coughs> there is a function called plot and it takes as argument as first argument x and a second argument y we close the parenthesis we hit shift enter and there is our graph looks pretty nice not quite nice enough though i think it looks a little bit raggedy so to make it look nicer we need to calculate the parabola at more points for example instead of going from minus 2 to 2 with 10 points we can go with 100 points if you hit shift enter it will calculate the parabola at those 100 points and make the graph there it is there are lots of ways to make this graph look even nicer we can add titles to the x and the y axes and for that there are functions called x label what shall we call the x axis for example x axis and the name has is a string and a string has to be between quotes then we also want to give the y label an x uh, a name y label um, let's call it parabola parabola that's difficult to type there we go if we hit shift enter it will have added the names to the x-axis and the y-axis uh, one last thing i want to show you um, i don't like that this graph just hits this y is minus one line i want to make the limits on the y-axis slightly larger and for that there is a function called ylim if we open up the parenthesis it will tell us what to do ah doesn't give us much help so let's hit the plus sign and you see it has to uh, you can specify a y min and a y max so let's click this away let's say we want to have the minimum of the y axis at minus 1.2 and the max at 3.2 we can type here minus 1.2 comma 3.2 close the parenthesis um, hit shift enter and there is your graph now once you're done with all your ipython work you want to save it and in fact you want to save it in between many times so you don't lose your work if something unexpected might happen for that you go to the top you say file you click on save a box pops up and you can specify specify where you want to save your file once we start working on notebooks that are provided in class you can open them up yourself so let's close this one up if you close this one ah it says it's unsafe because i never specified a file but i'm okay with that click ok it's gone one final thing if you want to open an existing notebook and you start up canopy express you will get this screen here then to open it up you simply do file open you go to the notebook you want to open for example this one you click on open and there it is this will be the first notebook that will be start start using in class to learn how to program in python and the first notebook will be about basics and plotting that was all for today i hope to see you next time goodbye